so I'm not accused of anything, let me speak in generalities. What if you have a highly skilled surgeon who is very wealthy through his practice, has built a humongous house, multiple wings, possibly, I guess, for maybe multiple wives or bringing other relatives here, I have no idea. Maybe a basement that could hold 200, 250 people and is said to be one of the highest ranking Muslims in a community. How often is this going on in America and other cities? The one I know of is what I'm speaking about. Is this a common thing or is this unique to this particular city I'm speaking of? Understandable. And I just gave you a verse from Quran, chapter 4, verse 95. Those who commit jihad through their wealth or life. Not everybody can go blow themselves up. But it's equal if they have enough wealth to put toward the jihad. As I said, terrorism, political jihad, um, or civilization jihad, all of them takes money. None of them are free. So we have highly educated, not just doctors, lawyers, real estate brokers that are definitely investing into jihad because at the end of the day, as I said, either they like it or not, they have no choice but to kill or convert everyone. It may not be tomorrow, but those who are true Muslims, they are aware of where this is going. So they are building big mansions because they know it will come to where they will need their situation room where they will bring their mom to sit down and actually put together a plan for a jihad, for a conquer. The point is, 1400 years of history constantly repeats itself with the same signal. And just in case, Brandon, just, just because you said you don't want to be accused, there is no accusation. Very recently, a female doctor in Ohio publicly tweeted that she will give wrong medication to Jewish patient to kill him. Wait a minute, say, say, say that again? She said what? A doctor in Ohio publicly put a tweet out saying, I, I will gladly give a wrong medication to my Jewish patient so they can die. She was fired from her job, but she didn't lose her license to practice. So she's a still a doctor. She just lost, lost her job. If, just imagine for a second if this was a Christian white doctor saying, I will give a wrong medication to a Muslim to kill him. You all know the charade that would start with this. Would they not have been arrested? Oh, forget about that. Not only they would be arrested, they would lose their license, they would lose their entire wealth and saving, and they would most definitely be charged with discrimination and hate crime. But this, this doctor was a Muslim, untouchable. This is what we're facing, people. Which, which proves we have Sharia already operating in America, does it not? Uh, which proves that Muslims are superior to other people in this which country. Which proves we now, with a question coming in to, from a listener, proves we have moved from the lower house to the upper house. The fact that this goes on routinely proves we have moved from the lower house to the upper house. Mm -hmm. The fact they're speaking this way, doing the things openly that they're doing and not concealing them, and tweeting them and saying them, including imams around the country the last few years who have been calling for the killing of Jews in America, this proves they believe they have the upper hand now and they're moving from the lower house to the upper house. So if they have moved from the lower house to the upper house as described in Islam, what does that mean? That means we're done. That means so do not weaken and call for peace when you're superior. That means heaven is under the shadow of the sword. That means kill or convert. When they are superior in number and power, Sharia is applying. And again, under Sharia, all of us who are not Muslims shall be killed. It means bloodshed. It means war. It means kiss goodbye your freedoms.